Good, uh, good afternoon. I'm very happy to be here, and I would like to thank uh, uh, Energinet, our partner, for organizing this event. I really enjoyed the interaction this morning, and I'll try to bring a bit of more of a technical perspe perspective of what I think we need as grid operator uh, to enable that uh, next digital transformation, which uh, I will clarify in the social network digital grid, and so you feel free to follow our hashtag uh, uh, from that point of view. So who we are, we are the Association of Transmission System Operators, so of course Energinet is part of it, but the entire TSOs of Europe. And of course we see ourselves as a collaboration environment, and what we try is really to bring best ideas of everyone. And of course digital has become a major agenda into our, into our uh, strategic uh, perspectives. So why do we need digitization? I think I will go very quick on that. I think we heard this, uh, this a lot this morning. It is a lot about uh, bringing the next mile of integrating renewable into the electrical system. So we are talking up to the level of 70%, 100%, 120%. Of course, that's when you look, it, look at it at, on a country perspective. What does that create as a problem is really that at the end of the day, we see the grid becoming a, a scarce resource in this environment. And so that fundamentally raises how are we going to allocate this case resource in the future to these people wanted to use it. Of course, the second element of it is the real-time market aspect. What is the future market design associated to that? How are we going to balance this? Do we need seconds, minutes, five minutes, 15 minutes? How are we going to co-optimize reserve, intraday energy, all what goes in the set of products which are required to stabilize the system? So this is really what is at the core of, of it. And what I would like to, to highlight into that speech today is that we are not thinking for digital for 2030 or 2050, but for today. And we are right now at the center of the deployment of new network code in Europe, which are basically to be new rule book on further integrating system together. And what we see, it already includes a lot of new processes, which we cannot do without digital. So I think digital is not an agenda for 2030, it's an agenda for today when we go into the grid operation. And of course, there are items related to today's, but there are also future items, and we do a lot of work with Horizon 2020 project as an example on TSO-DSO coordination, which is very important. What is really at the core of a lot of this thinking is how can we improve transparency on what happened into our system, on flows, cross borders, very important. But I think also what we will see uh, emerging is the fact that digital technology is going to set up a new collaboration framework between TSOs, between grid operators, TSOs, DSOs, so that we can together do calculation out of the same set of data. This data is called the common grid model. It is absolutely fundamental that in the next five years, we come to a situation where we have a unified, uniform view of that, uh, that system. So of course, there are various use cases associated to that. So some are related to the resiliency of the system, so some to the efficiency integration of renewable. I think we know where are the low hanging fruit. I think this message is for the IT industry. You don't need to come and with fancy use cases. We know where are the use cases. I think the challenge is now to roll it out. The challenge is to transform. The challenge is to scale it up. All these very nice concepts. And why is it a challenge? It's because the backend legacy systems are extremely hard to transform, migrate, and all associated to that. How can we help further as grid operator? And one we think, why, why we think it is absolutely strategic for us to play a certain role? First of all, we think the structure of our system are going to significantly change between now and 2030. We are heading into something which is a power network of networks, linking pan-European, regional, national, but even lower city. We heard this morning microgrids prosumers. So each level will have its level of optimization. I think I wrote a lot of paper in my past uh, on this when I was in the R&D community. We see this happening. I think in Europe the issue is not to think on microgrid isolated. The issue is to connect the microgrid with the rest of the system so that it is economically inefficient in, into the rest of the system. And then comes something new, which is also very important, which we hear more and more from the agenda of the Energy Commission, is what we call the sector coupling. And we hear coupling of various interesting things, gas, heat and power, um, emissions, tradings, consistency of emission, TSO, DSO, of course, and all what, got, what gets developed at the edge of the system. And let's be honest, as grid operator, we are not in the driving seat here. We see sensors appearing in the prosumer's environment, we now which now provide much more data, which could be useful uh, for our system as well. So here is about 
knowing, uh, finding a new way of exchanging information be between these subsystems so that the entire system becomes plug and play. Data is going to be the backbone of all these sector coupling in the future. And so it is absolutely essential to work together into that space. There's also this issue of multi-sided platform. I spent a bit of time in, in my last few years of reading what we lesson, what were the lesson out of Facebook, Ubers, and all that kind of things. The lesson is that there is a prime, uh, 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 there is really an interest of being a prime mover into this multi-sided platform. What we also take as a lesson is the grid operator, not talking TSO or DSO here, by default is naturally a multi-sided platform operator. So here the challenge is how can we, together TSOs and DSO, build the necessary platform so that we can get this open data exchange across the entire value chain and facilitate optimization at the right scale and pace. Uh, being minutes or second if, if there is value in doing this. So the question is how to scale up. I think this is the hundred million question. We are not more at the stage of inventing, prototyping artificial intelligence and so on, but first realizing that we are driving a plane which is extremely complex already and we cannot change it. And I remind that the market model in Europe is represented here. As you can see, it's pretty complex. It is underpinned by sets of complex rules, network codes and so on. This is, a drive, this is a current transformation of our European system between now and 2022. We cannot ignore this. This is going to happen. The question is how can we think on this trajectory and pro progressively evolve it into a, a roadmap which is between 2022 and 2030. I think this transformation is really absolutely essential here. So what we try to do at, at our level in a, in a number of manner is, is to bring these uh, few ideas together. We think there is an urgency into that, so we, we are developing ourselves in trying to be an innovation hub, taking the best ideas of, of the various TSOs, fostering and, and facilitating developments of very nice projects on the Horizon 2020 uh, example. We have an event called InnoGrid around that one. We do facilitate some R&Ds. We don't do the R&D ourselves, but we try to coordinate and facilitate some new developments, and as you can see, they are in market and flexibility, inertia, TSO, DSO, and so on. This is largely driven out of uh, Horizon 2020 project. And basically, what do we want to do in the future? In the future, we really want to build a system which is interoperable. We want to take advantage of interoperability and standards. So the common grid model is very important. We want to be cyber secure. I, I will not have a, a lot of time to talk about it, but it is absolutely fundamental. We are heading into a system which needs to maintain the same level of stability, security of supply. So how do we take into account cyber security risk as part of the contingency of the European power system in the future? So uh, we are building new platforms and we are building platforms out of platform of platforms and we are using standards. We are using reference architecture, and I would like to highlight here, we should stop saying there is no standard. They are standard. The question is how to roll them out, how to use them, how to update the backends to make good use of them, how to drive and strive for interoperability everywhere. We do much more interoperability effort into NSOE now. So that's one of the big app uh, platform which we currently drive to share information across TSOs. It's an extremely secure environment, and we want to build the common grid model in the future out of this infrastructure. In the future, there will be new development. I talk about the TSO, DSO. I think this will be my concluding slide. What is really a matter of critical importance is build these ecosystems together. What we see when we do all these Horizon projects, there are plenty of startups, plenty of infrastructure, digital company like Microsoft GE and so on. And the question is how do we foster uh, some level of ecosystem working in a consistent uh, manner together? We want in the future to be this system of systems to be con uh, composed of consistent sets of APIs, consistent set of standards, not reinventing the wheel on every project which we do and take best advantage in terms of artificial intelligence, big data analytics and so on from the startup, from the big industries, and it is very important uh, together to build that, uh, that ecosystem. And I I, we would welcome uh, any of you being interested in to contribute further into NSOE uh, from that uh, perspective. So that's in a nutshell what we think is very important to drive uh, not a micro level in innovation, but true scaling up of digital transformation into the grid system. Thank you.